My life has been a whirlwind of traveling and doing what I love. I dig in the dirt for a living. And I walk around and I hike and hike and hike. I love it. fossils. It's like they got a sign on them and it says, pick me, pick me. No, just kidding. My eyes observe things differently. You know, I'll see something that stands out and I, sixth sense, I'll, I'll look the right way. You know, it, it's impossible to describe how I do it. I just, it happens. Wendy is an advocational paleontologist. She's got a very sharp eye for finding fossils. Wendy's got a very good eye because, well, she would claim that because she's short. And I think it's just, uh, it's an intuitive innate ability to recognize interesting shapes and colors when she's walking around that are different than the, the rocks that surround them. She grew up in the Warner area, and since the time that she could walk, she was out walking the Badlands, gathering up scraps of fossils and showing them to paleontologists. She was instrumental in finding the Devil's Cooley nesting site. Back in 1987, a young local girl named Wendy Sloboda was hiking through the Milk River Ridge when she came across what she thought was dinosaur eggshell fragments. Now, she had spent some time in the Royal Tyrell Museum of Paleontology up in Drumheller, so she knew a little bit about what she was looking for. Now, she sent this eggshell fragment up to Dr. Len Hills at the University of Calgary, who confirmed it and sent it to Dr. Philip Curry in the Royal Tyrell Museum. They then sent a team down to investigate the ridge. The team actually managed to find some of these eggs, and being the first nesting site in all of Canada, it caused quite an uproar and it was absolutely incredible. Devil's Coulee Dinosaur Egg Site is so significant because we found dinosaur eggs there, but also was found dinosaur embryos, babies still inside the eggs, and it was the first in Canada. There was also eggs found in Montana, but they were hatchlings. These guys were still actually inside the eggs. Devil's Cooley Dinosaur and Heritage Museum is located down in Warner, Alberta. It's a fairly small town, but the museum itself is dedicated to the first dinosaur nesting site ever found in Canada. This is one of the dinosaur egg nests that was collected in Devil's Cooley. They actually laid them in pairs. It's a very important site, and even though the museum itself is small, we make up for our size with full guided interpretive tours. So we are going to be doing something called surface collecting, where we're going to take a look around and we're going to pick up microfossils, examine them, and then we're going to put them right back where we found them. When we take people out there, they get to experience what it would be like to be a paleontologist going out into the field. We examine fossils that have just barely touched the surface. Oh, a little piece of tooth. Oh, that's a nice one too. The kids get the chance to learn about how these dinosaurs lived, what they did, and how they acted in the world. The Devil's Coulee Dinosaur Egg site, it's a special place for me because it kind of set my life on a path and it led me into dinosaurs and that's what I've done since 1987 and it's been a, quite an exciting life. I am a professional photographer. My biggest thing is I do high action sports photography, like motorcycle racing. I've shot PBR, I've shot Red Bull events. Basically, the more exciting and dangerous it is, I like to do it. Looking for dinosaurs and photography tie in really well, especially wildlife photography, which I love to do, because I take my camera and go look for dinosaurs and take pictures of birds and deer and elk. The Southern Alberta area here has a lot of dinosaurs, but when everybody thinks of dinosaurs, they think of Dinosaur Provincial Park or the Drumheller Valley, which in my opinion is kind of good because it, it keeps people away from here and they don't want to flood to try and find dinosaurs. People like to collect dinosaurs and pick up dinosaur bones. If they don't know where they're at, they can't. Southern Alberta Dinosaur Project, SAD-P. It looks like a pubis okay. of a small hadrosaur. 
It's not not part of our, our, our guy, I don't think. Dr. Michael Ryan and Dr. David Evans are two very good friends of mine. I've worked with them a lot, and I think it's a great project. Um, they're doing a lot of good stuff. Yeah, I bet you the head is just tucked right there. They would have a curved back, be about that long the neck. The Southern Alberta Dinosaur Project is a multi-year collaborative research project between myself at the Royal Ontario Museum and my colleague, Dr. Michael Ryan at the Cleveland Museum of Natural History in association with colleagues here at the Royal Trail Museum, uh, the University of Alberta and, and uh, other institutions. And our goal is to study some pretty remote areas of uh, Southern Alberta, like here along the Milk River Valley fill in gaps in our knowledge of the dinosaur fossil record of Alberta to better understand how dinosaurs are evolving and changing leading up to that end Cretaceous mass extinction. This looks like, uh, actually, like it might be two bones. That looks... Dinosaurs actually are important for understanding what's going on in our modern world today. The work that we're doing here doesn't help us save individual species or individual animals today, but it puts the scale of how we're affecting our environment and our world and our global ecosystem today in an important historical perspective. And when you look at the rates of extinction that we're experiencing today, they are approaching the rates that we see in these big five mass extinction events, including the 166 million years ago that resulted in the collapse that wiped out the big dinosaurs. And so dinosaurs and their world are extremely important for understanding how the world will be affected by mass extinction, in our case, human-caused mass extinction. A lot of our big finds here in Southern Alberta are owed to Wendy Sloboda. She is one of the very best fossil hunters anywhere in the world. She has over 3,000 fossils to her name in the collections of the Royal Trail Museum, and she has definitely found most of our good specimens. We actually joke that we're Wendy's cleanup crew out here, and that's because she runs around and finds great stuff, and then fortunately for us, we have to go and, and dig up these great specimens. The story of Wendy Ceratops is, is like many for Wendy Sloboda. I mean, she found um, this amazing site, and we came and dug it up, and it happened to be a, a brand new and important species of dinosaur. And so we thought it was about time to, to name one after her in recognition of her amazing talent and contributions to Alberta paleontology. And so that's where the name Wendy Ceratops comes from. And I told them if I was going to save this spot on my arm for a tattoo of my dinosaur if they ever named one after me. Well, they obliged me and named this dinosaur after me, and they called it Wendy Ceratops pinhornensis. And it's a ceratopsian, and it has a very unique frill, and it's got spikes that droop forward. They said they compare it to my dreads. It's on display at the Royal Ontario Museum right now. It's pretty neat. I got to go out and see it in January, mounted and everything. It's a pretty cool little dinosaur. We actually made an exhibit around the discovery of Wendy Ceratops and how scientists go about identifying new species in the fossil record. So we actually have a full-scale reconstruction of Wendy Ceratops. We actually have the first bone that Wendy found in the ground, and we have some of the key original fossils that highlight that incredible story. To have a dinosaur named after you is one of the biggest honors that anybody in paleontology can have. I was pretty excited and still today when I hear them say Wendy Ceratops is just like shake my head. It's still kind of weird to hear it and to know that that's my dinosaur. My hope for the future of paleontology is that it continues to grow. We have so much more to discover and I think the Southern Alberta Dinosaur Project shows that you can get a lot out of an area like Alberta that many people would think is uh, you know, has been basically played out. And uh, there are so many places like this all over the world that paleontology have barely scratched the surface on. And I'd like to see a bigger next generation explore more areas and find out more things, fill in those gaps, and give us a better understanding of the history of life on Earth. Dinosaurs have kept me active. It's helping me stay younger, and, and every year I want to go out and find more and more and more and more, and it's fun. I enjoy it. It's good for my health. It's rewarding, it's, it's just everything. 20 years from now, hopefully I'll be looking for dinosaurs still.